G'day YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear Shed. Well, the weather report. <laughs> Look, it's not too bad at the moment. Um, the days are getting to 29.30 and we've had a, oh, actually quite nice nights. It's getting down to 17 degrees. See of an evening, so um, yeah, it's nice to lay back on the bed with the bloody windows open and yeah, you can actually get some good sleeping in, <laughs> which is always important. Hey. When you're an old fart, anyway, you need a bit of a snooze now and then. But, um, oh, it's been a busy week. The, um, I've been playing with the 3D printer, and, um, look, I've had quite a bit of success with that and the 360 and the, and the Fusion. So, um, I've, I've printed out some collet holders and all that sort of thing that, um, seem to be a success. So we're actually going to work away with that and, um, and, probably go on to the ER40 collets, now we've done the ER32s, but um, what we ended up building was some of these little fellas, and they have a male, female dovetail on them, so we have a little dovetail there, and that there is 2.8 millimetres, and the female one that goes with it, it's 3 millimetres. So I designed it in CAD so they can just slip together like that. And so now it's a, it's a modular system. So when the, when the, um, when you want to expand your collet set up, you should be able to just slide, join them all together and just slide them in. Just like that. Well, probably not just like that because I missed that bit. <laughs> but anyway, look, it, it is a good thing. It's, it's been working well. Um, the collets fit in them. Um, I did a little run of these, so I've got enough now to do um, all the ER32 collets. There you go, that's better length. So that one joins on, and then we actually have another one comes on the top, and that's enough to do the ER32. So We've proved the concept. Look, they are a little bit firm, but look, that's okay. It's not something that you're gonna have in and out every day. So, so when, you, when you sit it down and get it all nice and even, you end up with a, a block like that. So, and the ER32 collets, they just sit in there nicely. And I've done a test run over in the drawer there, and. They're actually working pretty good. It's got a slightly matte finish on the top, and I'm liking that. Um, the matte finish is the back of the insulation, or not insulation, the masking tape. I've been using masking tape on the bed, and um, it's leaving a nice matte finish. So I'm continuing down that way, as it's a finish that I can replicate right through the whole range. It doesn't matter what colour or whatever I can end up with that nice matte finish but another thing that's come to light with these collet holders is if I just set it on my my carby bracket here well the five C's fit in nicely too and you can open and shut your drawers and, and it's enough to support the five C collets nicely so I'm pretty pleased with that so we'll be doing a run I think with all by the time you count hex and square and all that with the 5C collets. I think I've got 40 of them alone where the 23 the ER32 um, collets, well I think it's 23 of them in a set or something and then I've got the ER40 so the ER40s we're going to do a, a similar design um, to this just with 40mm holes and these are 84mm across and I think I've come in for the dovetail, I think I've come in 21 mil or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> probably 22 mil, I'd say. I would have come back on the on the grid on Fusion 360 and dropped it on the on the corner there. So, um, so look, that's turned out all right. Um, with the with, with the dovetails, some of them come out really nicely. They just slide beautifully, and the other ones I just got to get a little little file and just. It ends up a tiny little bead on the end there, and you just got to get rid of that, and it goes okay. So, 
I may experiment yet with um, um, with making the male part of the dovetail say like, like at the moment the male parts are when you do you come down then you do the line back at 45 the male line is 2.8 millimeters where the female line is three so I may even have a look at coming back just a little bit more just to see what happens but but look all in all if that's as bad as it gets that's pretty good um, I am pleased with the effort on that um, the first ER32 collet that I showed last week that had curly edges a little bit um, I worked out what I was doing wrong there and I actually had too much clearance between the nozzle and the bed um, I, I brought that clearance right down low and so and what was happening when I'd, when I'd try and do a circle here it would start doing the circle and then halfway across it would actually pull the circle you know the, the plastic as it as it come around it would pull a circle and go out of shape on me so um, I worked out if I drop the nozzle a little bit and when the plastic comes out and it gets forced out with the little extrusion motor um, when you actually force it down onto the bed and make it stick you know instead of just having it sitting on the top I actually forced it down and made it stick and look at I haven't missed a beat since I, I haven't had a fail since I fine-tuned all that sort of stuff so so look that's bloody good yeah <laughs> I'm real pleased with the progress on the Fusion 360 um, I finished that early in the week then I didn't have time to come up to the shed here and actually try it and sit it in the toolbox and check depths and heights and all that sort of thing because this is 30 millimeters on the side here and so I've had to check now that if I open these holes up and make it bigger still with a 30 mil side there um, will the uh, 40s fit in a drawer, a 50 mil drawer all right and things like that so so look, it's all looking good um, I'll fill that up with my pellets shortly in those new toolboxes I have and I'll do a bit of show and tell there for you um, but look, the, the 3D printing is going good the, um, yeah, no problems there at all really also, last week I showed, well I think I showed, <laughs> I showed printing some 3D, or oh, some 3D printing, some vice jaws. And what it does is when you, when you print them, they actually sit right up on the angle like that, or something like that, probably like that. And you print them together as a pair. And um, look, I, I have tried them out, I'll show you a bit more on that soon. And they're sitting in the mill vice, um, with that shaft on the Morse 3 taper that we put, we're put, we making up a, a centre drill holder well it holds it great it's as solid as anything yeah so um, I haven't yet checked yeah when you sit it in the draw, in the jaws and um, I haven't actually checked the surfaces for tram and all that sort of thing make sure they're right but um, for something like this little job coming up there um, drilling a hole and tapping a thread and things like that just to hold the piece around so you can come and touch off on each side and do that look it's ideal it's it really holds them tight I haven't bought the magnets for the back yet um, little half inch little half inch um, rare earth magnets have to go in there but um, look whether I do or not with that I don't know but look the jaws are pretty good you can I've um that's 30% fill on the drawers oh, on the drawers um, on the jaws and um, you can you can get that bloody firm eh? I can't hear any cracking or anything like that when we're going getting into it and I've, I was given it a little bit so um, and it's probably because we have a large surface area to support it all I suppose but but um, yeah look, the 3d printing soft jaws it's okay if they're a bit out of whack for the fine jobs well that's no big deal um, I'll just keep them for use on a on a um, bench vice sort of thing but well, look, that, was, that was a good little exercise to learn about 3D printing um, I think it took about eight hours to print or something so the print is reliable I can um, I can actually set it up and um, piss off and <laughs> leave it there um, these <clears throat> these fellas here um, they take about three hours per section to do and so what I've been, what I did the other day, I just um, I put a couple in there, and um, it took about seven hours, nearly eight hours to print. Um, 
I've just got to go and slow while I'm, so I know what I'm doing with it. And um, yeah, it's, it's way up the other end of the house, I just let the printer go. So um, I did one first just to try it. It looked good. So then I did a pair so I could just see how everything slid in. And then, um, look, I was that pleased that I, I printed the last three. I set, it, I set it up on the way to work Monday, Tuesday morning and um, just pissed off to work for the day. And, um, and come home and I had some nice new bits and pieces. Um, yeah, look, there's very little tidying up. So, you know, so I'm wagging my tail about that. That's a good thing. The posty came again this week. I ain't getting real friendly with the posty. And um, I've been doing quite a few carbies up. And now, uh, all day yesterday pretty well, I was muck arsing around with carburetors. Now that's that's a 24T, a Zenith 24T carby off a um, Ferguson TE20. And um, a couple of old blokes at Harvey Bay and they, they play with tractors. and. Anyway, in the conversation, I said, oh, well, I'd do their carbies for them. And they gave me a chance to film a 24T. I hadn't filmed a 24T before. And um, there should be a little ream here somewhere. There it is, hiding in my junk. And, yeah, we've actually um, re-bushed the whole body here. Then we've, we've reamed the holes out. and We cut the bushes and, you know, we get these new brass shafts. And it's had new brass shafts put into it. And, I have to make a brass shaft actually, so so this weekend I've mainly been doing this carby up and, and getting that ready. Um, I have a 28G carby to do today. Um, that's off a of grey and gold Ferguson 35 petrol. So today we're, we're boring out the housing here on this, remember this little plate I made, it's, it's working well. So we're boring out the housing to 5 16th roughly. Um, I might start changing that to eight millimeters. And, um, and then we have the ream there for taking that to exact shaft size. So um, that'll be today's job. Um, I may get that, um, yeah, that Morse taper. I might get the thread in that and get that up and running. We'll just see how we go for time. Um, uh, it's Sunday morning. We've got the grandkids here, so I'm going to go and have a bit of a play and doodle around with them. So, so that all works out pretty well, really. Um, the carbies are coming along good. Um, <laughs> these old blokes, are, um, old blokes are old blokes, aren't they? And um, yeah, the, the carbies there, I, I said, look, 100 bucks. 100 bucks plus GST, so $110 for the labour. And, um, and plus the parts, and so they said, oh, do you mind if we send two? He said, yeah, all right, send another one, I'll see what time I get. And then it was, well, if we send a couple, does it get cheaper? And I said, oh, no, it doesn't. Um, this car be here, by the time we had trouble with the shafts, and then the bushes in the, they supplied a kit, actually, and supplied a kit, the kit had had half the parts robbed out of it, so Judy was in town, so I got her to grab another car be kit for us. Because, the, yeah, there was old gaskets and all that sort of thing. So, so we had to put the bushes in. And the bushes they've been supplying are a, are a white neoprene sort of stuff. But um, I've never had much trouble in the past, but with this carby yesterday, um, we, we took it out to 5 16th in the housing here, and usually you have to tap these in. And I made a little punch. Pop a little punch on the lathe to, to tap the bushes in and so I could get them right into place. And I tapped them in and I, you couldn't push them in, you had to tap them in. And then when we put the butterfly shaft in, well I had over 10 thou slots straight out of the box. And I thought, well that's, you know, when you're trying to get a good mixture for idling or something like that and you, you've got a butterfly shaft that's jiggling on the governor and, um, letting air in and all that, you, you got Buckley's are getting an engine running nicely, so um, so the job turned out a lot longer, so um, so we pushed the bushes out again and made new brass bushes and fitted the brass bushes, then set it up on the plate again and, and, um, and re-reamed the hole to shaft size, then put a dial indicator on it and 
Look, if you really push hard, I can measure half a fair. And that's fine. That needs to turn nice and freely. Um, and that does that. Then the bloody, <laughs> you wouldn't read about it, the choke, the choke shaft here. Um, the old choke shaft had a dicky thread in it. And we couldn't tighten it up then. I thought, well, I'll try and put a bigger screw. So I run a tap down, put a bigger screw in, and it pulled it. And so I thought, oh, crikey. So trying to get the screw back out to fix it again, well, the screw broke off in there, didn't it? So I had to do a Bruce Gitter out and got that out, but the shaft was already buggered up here. It had been in and out a few times, and you can see the wear there, and it's actually bent on the butterfly shaft, believe it or not. Well, this is not the butterfly, this is the choke shaft, I'm sorry. So, what I've done now, I've actually pinched the shaft out of this brand new carby I have here for one of my tractors. I've pinched the shaft out of that and put in this just so this old fella can get going. And um, I have the old shaft here to make one out of. So that'll be an interesting little exercise. Um, I'll just have to check that I like the brass is no trouble and you know a couple of holes is no trouble and this hole here for the T-piece is no trouble at all that's, uh, that's no trouble at all really and the thread with a flat the hard bit will be getting this slot in line so anyway so that's a little exercise we've got coming up and when we get to that who knows <laughs> um, we never know we seem to get very busy in the shed here then um, Today, today we start on this carby here. So hopefully we can, I can send them to work with Judy in the morning and they can ring them up and say, all right to go, come and get your gear. So by the time they come in like that, all greasy and um, all greasy and dirty and all that, and we sandblast them and we clean all the parts up and, um, and you know, detail them up a little bit. So there's a fair bit of difference. So, and, <laughs> yeah, look, a hundred bucks. If you had a good run, you'd get it done in a couple of hours, um, two or three hours. But yesterday, yesterday it was all day. Um, yeah, probably um, six or seven hours by the time I made bushes and um, sussed a few things out that I wanted to do. So, anyway, you're getting good value, these old holes. But anyway, that's about it for that. Um, oh, the, the shop, the new shop for Queensland Practice Fair. Um, the plasterer has finished now. Um, the, look, they've done a lovely job. The electrician's been in and he's cut all the neat holes for the lights, for the LEDs and all that. I don't think that was done last time. Um, this last few days at work there, the builders have been in there and they've been doing the door frames and um, putting doors and that in and you know getting them hung and all that sort of stuff. And Apparently the painters booked for this Wednesday, so I'm pretty keen Hopefully I can have a video of it next week and there's something decent to show you look um, I didn't take a video. I thought walking up the stairs showing you around you've all seen in there and The other week we had plaster on the walls and this time we've had a few cornices done and things like that so I didn't think there was a lot there to show so we haven't done a, a video on that but um, Spent all day on that carby there, spent all day filming. I hadn't done a video on doing that 24T carby up either. So um, a lot of the day was spent filming and redoing stuff and getting the light right and <laughs> all that sort of thing. Taking the swearing out. Well, there ain't actually much swearing. I don't swear much. I, I swear an awful lot in just day-to-day -day talking, but um, I don't aggro swear. <laughs> the, um, I get a shit or a bloody and that's about the end of it. Yeah, so. So look, stay with us a bit, um, I'll go and put this collet rack in and we'll set some collets up and I'd like to show you that. Um, just showing off now. <laughs> well here we are over at the toolbox, these are the, these are the big black toolboxes I bought a little while ago that we have waiting to go into our little home shipping container shop. And look at this. Well, doesn't that give you a bit of a woody? That's the draw for the ER32 collets. I've got a few spare holes up the back here. Um, yeah, just for putting junk in or 
Um, even if I do print up a couple of plastic ones just to salvage ones for particular jobs. But anyway, doesn't matter if they're empty. So look, they all work out well. Um, looks like there's 18. There may be some more cots I haven't got yet. I'll have to have a look and get them if there is. The um, I have room over the side here for the number three Morse taper, number two Morse taper, the ER32 holders, and I may even just print a little little support for them or something. We'll see. Depends how fiddly I want to get. Um, I have a ER32 plate here, and um, yeah, that's for mounting on a, you know, putting a backing plate on with my D1-4 cam lock mounts on the lathe to use ER32. But I have a, uh, I have an, um, a 5C collets, but this one here I find handy down then. Um, with the 5C collets, you can usually only put something fairly short, or hold for work holding anyway, something fairly short. Yet, um, with this being open back there, um, I find I can put this in the four jaw chuck, centralise it, get it pretty well perfect, and pop a collet in and go a bit longer if I need to. So I don't use that a lot, but something I have. The spanner hides up the back there, and this fellow here, that's one of those Sanderson's um, end mill sharpeners that I've never really played with much. I bought it because I thought, oh, that's a bloody good idea. And then, um, <laughs> I went and bought the tool post grinder as well, so I should have the heart. sharpest end mills in the country. So anyway, that's, that's looking good. I'm pretty pleased with the turnout of that. Um, I'll do a measurement across here and work out what I can sit in there just to keep these blokes captive. But look, not that they're... Uh, I used to have trouble with my toolboxes in years gone by because I was in utes all the time and everything shook around and the drawers would break in time and all that. But this is going to be sat up in the shipping container in a little home shop and not moved again for many years. So I don't think it'll matter. The doors slide nicely on these toolboxes, so I'm a bit keen to get all that done once we move into the new shop. And we have a big drawer down the bottom here, and we're going to have the same sort of thing as up here, but with all the five C collets in this drawer here. So anyway, there you go. That's show and tell over. <laughs> well, we're over at the mill vice now, and I just thought while we were going. I'll just show you what we're up to with these fellas. Now, look, they sit in there nice. They've got a good surface there. The holes for the magnets are there, of course, but I, I haven't done that. And then when you pop this in, we can do it with an extra hand, really. That's what the magnets are for, Lance. I can try and keep up. And that's pretty tight. You can move that a bit. Now look, they're, they're pretty good just for holding something for drilling and tapping and things like that out here. Um, I'm not saying they'd be really accurate if you're working on the space shuttle, probably should chuck them to the shit out. But um, look, all in all, in general, they're a pretty handy thing. And um, a way of holding something fairly true in the, in the vice here, um, you know, it saves you bugging around with parallels and all that sort of stuff, just for things that don't have to be, you know, don't have to be really, really accurate, but apart from that, they're just going to be a handy tool, I think. You know, they also have a, have a something to go that way for you. And you put quite a bit of weight on that handle, you don't hear any creaking or anything like that. So, anyway, look, I think they're a good thing. Um, they're on Thingiverse. Um, Mr. Pete had a link to it. Um, Moon is my something or other on it. I'll see if I can find the link. Um, Thingiverse is a thing where everything's free, but they like you to, um, to put
put a plug there for the people that have left this plan out on Thingiverse for all the rest of us to come and use and do that. And um, the courtesy thing is with it is when you make it, um, you give them a shout out and um, say that you've done it and that that's where you got the thing from, where you got the, the drawing from. So Thingiverse is a good tool. Um, once I refine the ER32 collet holders a little more, um, I'm going to put them out there for everyone for free as well. The, um, and the only thing I'm doing with it is I'll just change that dovetail because I'd like the dovetail that you've never got to work with one, but I did have a couple where I had to just get a tiny little file, you know, just a tiny little rifling file sort of thing and just, just take those beads off. So it may be more a print setting, who knows. But, but anyway, look, there for, for holding that, for drilling down the centre of it, you know, if you put a square up there and held that just to drill a hole, that would be heaps. That's a good thing. Okay, I think we've got time to do the thread here today. We'll, we'll make an effort and get stuck into that, I think. Now, <laughs> my favourite edge finder is this little baby here. It, just the light comes on. You can take your time with it. There you go. But because it's all insulated now, it doesn't work. So you've just got to find something to, to lean onto it so it earths out. So... I think, can you see the glow there? I don't know if you can or you can't. It's glowing. Anyway, so I'll, I'll zero everything out here for a minute. We'll go up. We'll come out this way. Put this on the other end just to make sure. Okay, we're going to have to leave it at that height to do our test because we're on our on our mill travel. Yeah, it's hard for you to see that, but it, it is on. Try to zero that. I'll try and keep my hand out of the thing. I've got the camera on a different side. Go across here, keep it at the same height. So if we come across and touch it. should give us halfway. Well that should give us the back edge, front edge, whichever way you're looking at it. There we go. Let's repeat that. Okay. So we go half of Y. Then if we come up gives us our centre point. Five, four, three, two, one. Bingo. There's centre point. So we take this out and get rid of the earth. We'll go and find a little centre drill. Well, we found the centre here. We've put a number two centre drill in the, light, in the milling machine here. And we've got a Nico mark there, a Sharpie mark, back as far as we need to go. After putting a, putting a drill in, we sort of worked the halfway mark out. 
So let's um, drill a bit of a hole and put a thread in here. Now by going in a little deep with that, um, that'll give us like a start of a 6mm taper here and that'll give us a good run in for the drill but going a little bit bigger it'll also give us a nice lead in for the tap. So we'll lift this up out of the way, we'll pop the 5mm for 6mm hole. I could have run a mill across for a smooth surface, but with little end mill, it's quite rigid. I, I didn't feel it needed it. Okay, we might slow that down a little bit. Put a bit of lube there. right through and we do have that little lead in for the tap now so we'll start off with a tapered tap on as slow as we can go I haven't got very tight into the chuck, so I'm hoping that it goes so far and slips. That's one part of the thread done. Now put the bottoming tap in. Possum pee. I've had comments can you use badger pee and all that. Well, it depends what country you're living in. We don't have badger pee here, so we've got to use possum pee. I'll have to deburr that hole a little. And with any luck at all, we'll have a six millimetre thread in there. Get rid of this for the moment. Yep, that's going to be a good thing. Alright. I'll get this out of here. Get all the rubbish out. Deburr it. I'll be back in a minute. Well, there you go. That's a little tool. Now I have a centre drill that I ground a, ground a flat onto, just as a way of stopping it from turning. Now if we... I'll just hold the shank here if I can. 
pop him in so the flat's there. We should be able to pop the grub screw in. And tighten it up. So there, job done.